So I got another question recently from a user of Revit and Vasari asking if you could make this sort of lovely geometry as exhibited by Office Da for their bank restaurant project. And uh, the answer is a yes. With 2013, there's some nice repeat and divide functionality. I'll show you how to use it to make this sort of geometry. So here's the version that I cooked up. And you can sort of look around it. You've got this sort of nice layering of slats. Uh, and if you look at it, you know, up in plan, you'll see that it's actually pretty well ordered. Uh, I think it actually might be slightly differently ordered than the actual project that it's emulating, but I'll show you some variations that you can do on this kind of way of laying it out. The basic idea is that you've got a loaded family, of course, like this, and it is repeated across a larger surface, like this. And just to dissect it a little bit, I'll show you that you select the whole repeat, and delete it, and what I've got is I've got one divided surface, like so. And then if I further delete that, I've got just a regular old surface. That surface in turn is just made out of a series of reference lines. If I take these reference lines and I can select them and turn them into a form. Oops. Let me add that guy to it. Like so take that surface, I can divide it, and I think the way that I had it set up before was it was in a, uh, I think it was 7 by 30, or maybe 30 by 7, uh, I think it was 30 by 7 by 30, like that, and no, I think I had it right before. Yeah, we'll figure that out. And then the trick for laying in the adaptive components so that they can actually stick to this is that you need to select the divided surface and you need to use this special little arrow thingy up here in surface representation and turn on nodes. Uh, adaptive components love nodes. They'll stick to them like glue. And I've got my family here, which is, let's see, there he is. And if I just place them out here in space, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got a seven point family that creates this little strip. And I'll show you how that's constructed in a minute as well. Now, let's see, let's see here. Which way is seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, wait, did I not do this with seven? What have we got? 12 by, oh no, I did 12 by 12. All right. 7 by 30. So now I've got a reasonably dense thing here. And in fact, I do want to do it as, sorry, I'm just going to drag you through the mud of my figuring out what I want to do. 7, 30. Uh, it's just a matter of which way I want to have the resolution and which way I want to have these things laid out. So I've got this thing as so. And now I can take my component, which again, I'm going to show you in a second how to make it. And I'm just going to lay it out on this thing. One, two, three, four, five. And there's a note in there somewhere. Six, seven. Oh, crap. That's right, because if I've got a seven point family, I'm only going to be doing a six point divided surface, but doesn't matter because it just stretches that last guy out. So now I've got the thing laid in here. I want to spread this thing across this whole surface. I've just got my handy dandy uh, repeat button. It's a little bit subtle up here, but it's up there in the modify bar after you select this guy. I go whack and I go and I have a sip of my beer and I twiddle my thumbs for a minute and I watch my progress bar because it has to think about spreading this all out and then I've got 30 of them spread all over my surface like so. You'll notice a couple things about this. They are all standing up nice and straight. There's a particular button you need to push within the family itself to get that 
So let's discover a little bit about what's going on with this family itself. So if I select this guy, I'm going to edit that family. And I can see this is an adaptive component. It's made of seven pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can delete this form just to sort of keep examining how this thing is put together. I've got seven profiles on these seven points. And if I select them, I can just go whack and create a form out of them. However, I also want to show you how this thing is put together. This guy has, in fact, a nested family inside of it. So if I open up that particular piece, give me a second while it refreshes. So here I've got my nested family, which is pretty dumb. It's just one adaptive point with a profile drawn on it. And if I look at this guy's host, show host, I can see that it's just drawn on the vertical work plane of one of these points. It is in turn loaded into this guy. And I'll just recreate this for you just to see how it is relatively quick to put together. So I've got my one adaptive point. I select, well, it's not an adaptive point yet, it's just a point. I make it adaptive. And now I've got family three, which is my profile. And I bring it in. And so now I've just got this thing I can place. I can place it out here, but I can also place it right on that adaptive point like so. All right. So I've got one point with an adaptive component placed on it. I want seven of them because that's the resolution of the swirly thing that I want to make. So I'm just going to go, I'm holding down the command key or the control key, and I'm just going to drag out this guy. And you can see if I look at him, there's a number two in there, right? because this is adaptive point one, this is adaptive point two. And if I just keep holding down the control key, I got three, I got four, I got five, I got six, right? Now, I can select all of these guys and I can hit create form. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, oops, I want one more. And I can just extend that thing like that. That's actually something that a lot of people don't realize is that you can you can alter your form elements that way. Um, so now I've got this thing. If I reload this in here, you're going to see that it's not going to quite behave as we want it to. And then I'll go back and I'll show you why and we can change it. Right now, if I select that point, I can go in and I can see that its orientation is going to be taken from its host reference. That means that it decides how to point up based on the surface that it's hosted on. And sort of the easiest way to illustrate it is just to load it in and have it behave badly. So right now, all these guys are standing nice and straight up in the air. And in a second, they are not going to be standing up so nice and straight in the air. Ooh. So as we can see, now these guys are all sort of going off in all sorts of crazy directions, which maybe that's what you're into and maybe that's what you want. You see that each one of these guys, those little profiles in there, they're all sticking out at a direction that is what's called normal to the surface of this curvy wavy thing. They're sticking out sort of straight like porcupine quills off of it. And so the form is also waving and flapping around in the breeze too. If that is not what you want, then you need to go back over into your family and you can select all of these points. Shabam. And if you go over here into the properties, you'll see orientation by host reference. And you don't want by host reference. You want vertical on placement. That means that it's going to override the particular orientation that's happening on the surface. And it's just going to go straight up in the air. And it's going to follow gravity or, you know, the reasonable digital facsimile of gravity. So I'm going to pause this while this regenerates. It'll take about 10 seconds. And so now we can see what's happened. Now our bad boy is standing nice and straight up in the air because it is overriding those local surface normals and just using a sort of global coordinate system to find out what is pointing up. One last thing to show you now about this guy. If I go up onto the top, we can see there's a funny thing going on in terms of the spacing. 
you see that here you've got some wider spacing, here you've got some sort of narrower, closer up spacing, and again here you've got some more wider spacing. It's because by default, the way that this surface is measuring how to make these divisions are by measuring right down the middle and right down the middle. And those are called belts that are doing that measurement. And we can see what those look like if I get in here and I select my divided surface. See that little guy right there? That is also very subtle. It's called the face manager. We're going to go and we're going to manage our faces. Uh, and if you are in here in this face manager, you can see I've got this little guy here and this little guy here. And what they're meaning is that they are measuring equal distances along this surface, 30 measurements and equal distances along this piece of the surface at seven measurements. Now, if I want to have even measurements here along, the, along this edge, I need my belt to be measuring over there on that edge because right now that's not what it's doing. Right now it's going on this wild, weird, wavy track to measure equal spacing, but I want to measure it from over on the edge. So if I grab, I can either grab that guy and drag it over manually, or I can also set my belt measurement, my properties to be either zero or one. So I'm actually just going to do it that way. I'm going to set these both to be zero, which is just going to push my belt measurements over to the edge. I don't really care which edge it is. I just want it to be on an edge because that way it'll make it actually do a nice even spacing along the side. So there it is. It's straightened out. We have gone and managed our faces. Doesn't that feel nice now to have your face managed? And you can see if you look at it from the side, we've got nice even spacing because it is measuring along that nice straight edge along the top. And so now we have these nice straight edges. And um, you, know, you can go in and you can look at it in different directions and see how pretty it is, um, like so. And you just have this thing sort of flowing through here. And uh, that's about it. And I hope you find that useful. I'm going to put these files up so you can download them and look at them at your leisure, dissect them. Uh, but I hope that that was reasonably cogent. Thanks for watching.